Hi everyone, and thank you for coming. Um, so today I'm going to try and give you some insight into how decision scientists in Funding Circle uh, leverage an R in China to build, um, uh, deploy, and continuously optimize decision process. Uh, I will mainly focus on how we use these tools uh, during our underwriting uh, process, which lies at the core of what we do as a business. For those of you who are not familiar with Funding Circle, um, we're a startup uh, fintech co company operating a global marketplace in SME lending. So we facilitate loans to small and medium enterprises in both UK and US. Uh, through our platform, SME companies can quickly and effectively apply for loans. And retail investors like you and me, um, or institutional investors uh, can contribute to fund these loans. Uh, we launched in 2010, and since we launched, uh, we facilitated around more than $1 billion in dollars in loans to more than 10,000 companies. And these loans were funded by more than 40,000 uh, retail investors, as well as institutions such as the UK government, universities, local councils, um, as well as other financial institutions. Uh, um, interest uh, received by lenders on our platform range from 6% to 18%, depending on the risk of default of the loan. And we currently classify the loans in six buckets. Um, each one is assigned an estimated annual loss, uh, which range from 0.6% for the A pluses to 8% for the E bonds. So, um, as you can imagine, the core value of our marketplace, apart from matching borrowers, borrowers to lenders, is actually the quality of our underwriting. So we always strive to make this as accurate as possible, so as to um, allow both lenders and borrowers to get a fair and transparent deal. Uh, historically, we have been outperforming expectations in terms of uh, deferral rates, and I think that's the main reason why so many retail investors and institutions are willing to put a lot of money on the platform and us in return are able to help a lot of SMEs to gain finance and grow. And I personally believe that the way we structure on our underwriting process and how we combine statistical and judgmental models using R and Shiny are the driving factors of our success. And I will I will just, um, so this was a few words about who we are and what we do, and I will try and show you um, how we, how R and Shiny come into play um, for us to be able to, to do this. So broadly speaking, um, there is two types of underwriting that you can do. One is automated, the other is manual, and both of these have significant advantages. For example, if you have a fully automated process, that means you can, um, it can offer you immense scalability, so you can process applications very quickly and effectively, whilst you can't do the same with the manual process unless you hire um, underwriters linearly as your volumes grow. Um, it's also very reliable. I mean, it will give you the same result, given the same data all the time. The same is not guaranteed with underwriters. It's very flexible. If we want to change our decision process, we can implement the changes and these take effect immediately. While with underwriters, you have to change their mentality, how they see things, so it um, takes more time. And I think the most important advantage of being automated is like it's cost effective. And this stems from everything that I said before. Um, on the other hand though, if you have a manual underwriting process, um, it means that you can process both digital and non-digital forms of data. It can offer you an extra layer of protection against fraud because uh, people are looking into documents um, and you don't have to rely only on digitally imputed data. And these guys come with um, uh, many years of experience so they can um, apply a more holistic view of the applicant, the industry, and can, they can spot anomalies and they can also take into account like extenuating circumstances um, of the applicant, etc. Um, so in Funding Circle, we decided that we wanted uh, the best of both worlds. So we implemented a hybrid semi-automated, semi-manual approach. 
On one hand, we have our machine learning algorithms which risk grade our loans on the platform, and then we have manual underwriters reinforcing the, the results um, by looking at the deals themselves. Um, so our main challenge in applying this uh, hybrid approach was in order for us to get the maximum of the benefits that we could, could get, it was to be able to establish a good communication channel between statistical and judgmental models, because we knew that that's the only way to, to make it um, a success. And also to, to structure it in a way that um, one operates on information that the other does not have, and vice versa. <clears throat> so uh, how did we achieve that? Well, um, thanks to Shiny, I think. <laughs> so we create interactive environments using Shiny, whereby underwriters can get a very deep insight into the model. Um, they have the ability to update information if they have, um, <clears throat> if they have more up-to-date information uh, about the applicant or if something came in after the application was run on, on, the, on the machine learning uh, stuff. Um, and they can quantify the influence of every single factor in the model in a, in a way that it makes them understand the mechanics behind it. And this becomes very important for them when they're dealing with big tickets, like we're lending up to one million for each company, so you understand like, uh, that that uh, becomes very important. So I think Shiny <clears throat> allows us to kind of bring our models into life uh, in front of the underwriters. And that has proven like extremely beneficial and we've seen like a lot of great things from it. Um, as, as a decision scientist I think I was able to learn a lot about how they underwrite and I think vice versa they were able to understand more of, from our world so we are able to work together in a very optimal way. So this is um, how we create this feedback loop so basically we deploy our models into uh, using R and Shiny. These guys use them. They give us our, their feedback in different forms. That feedback fits back into our data and it's used when we update our models next time. We have different types of feedback. Um, so I just put a picture of roughly how it works. So we have our data that fits into R and as data scientists build machine learning algorithms based on that data, then we deploy them using interactive uh, UIs in Shiny, and underwriters have access to that UI, so they look at um, the kind of exploring consistencies that sometimes we even flag, or they can flag in Shiny and um, give a final uh, solution. Um, they can input information from non-digital forms of data. For example, we collect a lot of bank statements, which we haven't managed to transfer digitally. So those bank statements can provide very useful information. Um, and there was no way for us to um, have that information in the models in the first place. So through this, we're able to um, take into account that as well. Um, they're very good for fraud because they can spot things that a model, you know, you can't um, have a model being able to kind of cover everything. So they kind of look at anomalies themselves. Um, and then they provide their feedback and that comes back to us or in the form of data. And as I said, in the next iteration of our models, we make sure that, that we, we um, look into that feedback and improve further or make our models more comprehensive. Um, so just uh, before I show you a demo of uh, a shiny app that I had to approve to show, so it's kind of very simple and I had to hide a lot of things. But before I do that, just a few advantages that I believe Shiny provides us. It's an amazing devless environment, as we call it, because we don't need to rely on tech to implement our models. Um, it gives analysts full control of what they build. Um, it's a great testing environment, a lot of decision processes that we want to launch. We first launch them in Shiny, have the users in the business uh, interact with it and provide us feedback again. And then when we have like a finalized a prototype, then we take it to tech and we productionize it in our systems. Again, like the interactive feedback loops are amazing um, in order to optimize our models. 
and um, maybe I'm repeating myself, but yeah, real-time updating of, uh, of decision process, it's uh, very important um, as well.